Una delegación de jóvenes daneses visitó Colombia del 9 al 30 de noviembre para conocer las experiencias del movimiento social y popular en nuestro país. Independencia TV se reunió con dos de ellos, Peter y Dinak, para conversar sobre su experiencia. ¿Qué fue tu impresión sobre la situación en Colombia, su población en el país y en las ciudades? ¿Cómo te sentiste? Well, like it's always frightening to to see the conditions that people, at least the poor people in Colombia, are suffering from. Um, but in a way, we knew a lot about this. Um, so what was really exciting was to see, to the degree that they had found out that organization was the way for them to. Get out of poverty. You know, get out of you know, fight back, um, and that's been inspiring. All that we knew when we came here was the prosperity, because that's all we should hear about before we come. But I, I think, uh, besides being being well organized, uh, the Colombians have, have a third have a certain humoristic take on their situation which is very uplifting even at the most gloomy meeting yeah. Yeah. so what was your, your impression especially on the countryside how you felt when you traveled by Tolima and Barranca uh, would you like to begin yeah like first of all I went to Tolima she went to Matilde Media um, like everywhere we we went, people have been very welcoming. Um, like we haven't gone into a house without being offered like a tinto uh, before any meeting. Um, and then again, we've we've had some very inspiring moments. Like both meeting people who knew about what, who knew what organization was about and what could be achieved through it. And then with I went with Asta Katol and we also went to some villages um, where they were only beginning to organize or where they hadn't ever organized. Um, and the hope that pe hope that people only saw for the future when they were being told about what could could be achieved to organize was it's, it was very inspiring, very warming, um, especially because we also at that point saw what people have, and heard about what people have been going through. Magdalena Mary, how was it? That was quite a different experience because we uh, came to these uh, collective villages um, made um, um, of, uh, of and for by fugitives from other parts of the country so it was uh, it was very well organized places even though they had we went to uh, to colectivo for example and they had been burned down like three times the last 30 years but they they they, they, it was like they had this ability to 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 keep going and we were were, were very very amazed with the <coughs> With the d degree of of order and, uh, and 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 tranquility, even though there's there's no state there uh, except when they come out there with guns. Um, for for a Danish um, person, it's it's very strange to see a place without a public healthcare system, public education, um, public uh, public justice system. Uh, I, I thought that was the most amazing amazing thing. That they they seem to make it work uh, despite everything. Okay, and your your experience here with, with the city that you, as far as I know, you have been here in some organizations here in Usme and Ciudad Bolivar. How was it? Um, first of all, the authorities are present here in not only through military presence, which has been. That, that was nice again to be out of those, not, not being held back by military checkpoints all the time, even though you've got police all over the place. Um, then we went to, to these, um, we went to the social platform, for instance. Um, the entire first week was planned by 
social platform and we had a lot of very nice experiences with a lot of people who really knew what it was about um, and, who, and who, who had a lot of experience that they were able to share with us about organizing the youth and about making things work in, in the poverty of the southern suburbs. For you. I that that one of the most amazing things were the productive projects that they have made uh, for women, for fugitives, so on. Um, I like the fact that, that it seems that, uh, that uh, the, the social platform of Usme um, makes things happen instead of just forming groups and doing campaigns and so on. And I, I thought that was very very um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was very educational for us because we're we're a political organization we do campaigns and manifestations and demonstrations and so on and I um, thought it was extremely interesting to see people organizing locally to to, to, to actually make a, a life what, as as Vegas said before, like a lot of things like healthcare and education and stuff like that are being taken care of by the authorities in Denmark. So it's not something you really get to do without working for the authorities, um, without being employed by the state or the municipalities in Denmark. Uh, and to see that ordinary people can make things like that work, maybe not on a large massive scale, but on a scale that makes a difference for people who are not being offered these, these benefits by the authorities. That was really, really a beautiful thing to see and something that we could learn from. Because that's not how we work in Denmark. Again, from your point of view, how, is, how you saw the, organiz the, the organization of the Jovenes here? How was it, the experience? Because one of the things that we have known from other people that have come here, they are like kind of pressed for the number of young, of young people that is working here. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you feel it? How do you see it as being young people to coming to us to know our experience and sharing experience? Um, people here have like seem, or young people seem to be quite mature, and the people we've been working with, especially like, and, and aware of their obligations because they've seen their parents' generation, a lot of them being killed um, in the past, and they seem to be aware that it's up to them now to like, grasp the chance and go for making a better future. Um, so they've been quite enthusiastic about it, especially because they made a lot of projects that actually work and back in Denmark like we may do like a lot of big campaigns um, without like any of those small objectives like making um, like a, a small healthcare center um, that would really give us the success that we, and a momentum for women. So that was my like maturity. Would be your yeah, I thought it was their their glow and their belief in, in changing this country and changing the world. Because as I perceive my own generation in Denmark, they 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 don't really believe in in making a, a difference and making things different. So I think that has been amazing to meet people who actually thought that that there was something to do and, and that it was possible to, to make another world. Okay, and especially about the um, students' movement that you have met here. Yeah, she's been working a lot with the students back in Denmark. So yeah. uh, oh, I, I think that the Danish students' movements have a lot more uh, formal um, ah, influence. 
influence? Influence, yes. <laughs> but um, that the that the students' movements here are a lot more active and and not afraid to just do it, make take action, make demonstrations and so on. That's where the Danish students' movement sometimes is a bit bureaucratic and there's heavy. a lot of cooperation with the state. Exactly. Like, there's a lot of lobbying going to meetings and stuff like that and a lot lot less mobilization going on back home in Denmark. Besides that we have like a unity movement so we also have uh, social democrats and, and, and farther on in our organization so um, like uh, things uh, such as such an, as being aware of gender differences is something that you have to fight for years to, to get through as a policy in a Danish students organization. So it was great to come here and see that that, that they're aware of of other things than just uh, educational system and, and cut downs. I think they're more they're more political and more whole in their analysis of, of the of the country and of the education system. And they dare do it. They're not afraid of saying it, that there are fundamental problems within society that, that also need to be changed in order to make things work. Yeah. It's like in, in Denmark we see the same problems but we can't tell people why. And that's what they can. Okay, um, you as a political organization to do when you come back to Denmark? Uh, we we got to hand out a lot of information in, within our own organization because the picture that's being painted of Colombia is mainly through mainstream um, mass media, yeah. like, uh, as it is in, in Colombia as well. Uh, as an example, in Danish uh, newspapers you can find articles that claim that Santos is uh, a social democrat. Um, so that needs to be changed. <laughs> uh, of course, um, it have to. It must be. Yeah, um, definitely. And and then we need to make them aware that even though there's a lot of bad things going on in Colombia, which you don't need to be a genius to to find out, um, there's also a lot of positive things going on. Like we've just been talking about social movements, mass movements, students. Uh, the unions um, that seem to be gaining momentum right now and that need to be supported either by supporting their own individual organizations or by supporting like um, broader organizations like uh, the Marcha Patriotica. Okay, um, what's, what's your opinion about Marcha Patriotica? Our opinion? Um, like I, I said, we come from a country with a lot of like unity, like unity for the unions, unity for students, um, and it's a long tradition, a long tradition to unite in Denmark in order to to gain um, political influence, and that has its ups, has its uh, ups and downs, but in this specific case. Yeah, I it, it just think we also come from a country where the the different sectors is very very keen on, on, on keeping for themselves. Mm. It's like unions, they only uh, talk about uh, the labor market. Trade unions. Union. Yeah, yeah, trade unions, yeah, sure. <laughs> and and the, the students' organizations only talks about education. So I think the, the, the union of uh, a lot of different social movements is quite strong. Yeah. And, and unity has worked in Denmark. It's not really working that well anymore. There's a lot of things that need to be undone and redone and torn down and build up again. But the overall idea is, is necessary in order to gain political influence. Okay, and uh, as far as I have seen, you have like a good um, perspective about how is the, our government of Santos and the perspective of the social movement and about the guerrillas here, about the peace dialogues. What are you expecting? What, what do you think about it? Do you think it's going to work? And if it's going to work, how it should be? What we could follow? And especially as the um, social movements and organizations. I think that the most important things that I have learned in Colombia is that 
peace can't be obtained by soldiers drinking coffee and talking to each other. That um, that peace will not come to Colombia if if the problem of the massive inequality isn't solved. Um, that would be the first thing. That that even though FARC and the government lays down their weapons, then people will still be extremely poor in some parts of this country and they will probably still being have to fleet their, their, the way that the, the places that they're born and the places that they live and so the exploitation will still be massive yeah um, and what's being repeated over and over again by the social movements is that in order for the conflict to end we need social justice and I don't think it can be repeated too many times in any way and that's what we're fighting and hoping for back in Denmark because we've still got massive problems and that's what we're hoping for you to achieve down here in Colombia and that's what we need to tell Denmark also because I think people think that it's a question of FARC versus the government and also in Denmark, people are very influenced by, uh, like, the European Union's uh, list of, of terrorist organization where FARC is on. So it's very like, yeah, we're hoping for the Colombian government to, yeah, achieve peace. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And what needs to be told is also that there's not social inequality and economical inequality because of the conflict but that the conflict mainly grows out of those problems. There's a reason for it. Not to justify war, but there's a reason for it. Okay, thank you very much. I think that's all about the interview.